Hello my friends! <laughs> We're back here at Kubota Garden in South Seattle and I'm here today with the Weeble Lab gimbal and we have the X-T3 with the 18-55 to kit lens on it and we're just gonna go take it around the park and just see how it performs. And I should note that whenever you get a gimbal it's kind of a good thing and a bad thing because even though it stabilizes your camera it takes a lot of work to get to know how to use it. It's not so easy to just plug and play. So this might take a little, a little bit of experimenting but let's go see what we can shoot. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is unlock all of the hinges here because if you have it in lock position, it doesn't move around, but once you set it to lock position, it starts to move around pretty freely. And then we're going to power the gimbal on. Now it's locked into place, so when I start moving it around, that camera stays really, really stable. And so for the X-T3, we're going to power that on, put it into video mode, shooting in 4K, and I think I'm going to put it into Provia. <laughs> You're messing on the decks. I know! I know! There we go. Two taps in the front, follow button to recenter it. It's really bright out, so it's not the best time of day to be shooting, but that's okay. Alright, let's get going. Yeah, that's the nice thing about this gimbal too, is that it comes with this little tripod, which you can have down here if you want to hold it up straight. You can also stick it up here and have two handles on it. So yeah. It's much more ergonomic because even though this gimbal and camera setup is overall really light, it's still pretty heavy. It's hard to hold this for very long. Right. So we're in the Kubota Garden, Seattle, South Seattle in particular, which is a really nice free garden. And it was left by a Japanese man who was a garden, master gardener. And he said he wanted it to be free. That was his wish uh, as a legacy. And now it's the best garden because it's neither crowded nor that um, expensive I means it's free. It's a good arm workout. Yeah, that's why we lift weights. <laughs> so we that was pretty use, stable though, I like that. We can find see out it. if it's usable after we put yeah, it on okay. the big screen. Continuous focus on the Fujifilm right under the middle there. You can Totally, yeah. but yeah, that right oh, now is go. supposed to be focusing That's on the flower. Nice. So now, yeah, go out in and out. It should be giving you decently smooth, smooth. imagery there and <laughs> much yeah, smoother sir. motion out of the follow mm -hmm. mode. Yeah. yeah, that looks pretty awesome actually. Yeah, that's smooth. I like that. So yeah, for the X-T3 in particular, I think this gimbal is going to be really helpful because even though the lens might have OIS, it's still not all that stable compared to your X-H1. The that X-H1, Ibis, um, that Ibis the pans I did in Florida came out completely perfect as if you did them on a gimbal. A lot of your pans come out really well. Like the X-H1's Ibis is like much better than Sony's Ibis. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's for sure. But it wasn't easy. I had to learn. Yeah. And that's the thing, it's like, all this gear comes with a steep learning curve now. Including the gimbal. It took yeah. us like, what, at least an hour or two this yeah. morning just to get it this far. Yeah. Yeah, the ergonomics are a huge it's much improvement. Better, but your uh, the LCD is still pretty blocked. It would really be nice if you had to flip to the side or even slightly up LCD because it's still like when you're going like this. Yeah, it's, it's a little hard to see well. what you're shooting. But this I think is much better than the crane, the crane V2, which is also what we have. And so yeah, we'll do another comparison about the crane V2. But I like the compactness of this gimbal a lot more. We are compact shooters. Um, and the biggest thing we put on when we travel or do documentaries and videos is a mirrorless camera. So the truth is that uh, we don't need a crane. And this is the gimbal that's made exactly for a size like the cameras we use. Basically this X-T3 and my bigger X-H1 
are the biggest cameras we care to put on here. Yeah, A7R3 can also be on this camera. It's another 200-ish grams heavier than the X-T3. So this will still support it. The claim is still six pounds. I wouldn't put it on six pounds or put six pounds on it because it, it already feels a little bit weak, honestly, with this camera on it. Um, there's also some fine calibrations we need to do um, both for the motor and for the rest of it which we haven't done because we didn't want to waste any more time and we got very frustrated because it's um, UX is not at all self-explanatory and the instructions are pretty weak but uh, now that we have it it's actually pretty enjoyable and fun to use mm -hmm. but gimbals are always like this mm -hmm. like they take a lot it's again really hard to just put it on and start using it with the exception of maybe phone gimbals and uh, the Osmo but you balance this one way faster than the crane the well, I've crane, learned a, I learned a few things about balancing since having the crane so the crane was, was more um, difficult and then was harder to actually use properly mm -hmm. um, truly if this is perfect for us we'll probably get rid of the crane I think we will because I already yeah. like how compact this is. Yeah. You can essentially just stick this inside of a bag. With mm -hmm. the crane, you have to take it apart and then the batteries yeah. fall out and then there's just more pieces to it. So here comes the inevitable moment where we have to rest the camera and the gimbal without wanting to undo it. So let's see how easy that is with this one. All right, so I powered it off. You have all these red switches here that'll just lock everything into place. And when that's the case, Yep, everything locks. You can feel it kind of click. And right here too. More locks. Yep. So it just locks like that. So totally stable. And then this part unscrews. And actually you could even mount it here. I don't yeah. know why you'd want to do that, but you could. But there's another... Oh, I know why. Yeah? Yeah, I'll show you later. Okay. But you can put this little tripod down below. Alright, ready? it up right here all right so one of the best things about this gimbal is that uh, this is the tripod plate and you can actually keep the tripod plate mounted to your camera and take it off and on the gimbal without having to reset and rebalance everything and that is huge because most of the gimbals you, when, when you take your camera off you have to rebalance reset it and it's a huge annoyance and it takes up too much time so in this case I took it off and we're gonna just pop it back on click into place and then this front part you just screw it in and then just <laughs> yep okay all right there we go so now we can pick it up and keep going the one time we're cursing the sun is when we're trying to get good shots because when you have too much sun like this it's all actually right. a curse to trying to shoot so good here's footage. a point to make about using gimbals um, gimbals are supposed to follow the direction of this central axis that they're on so when you're moving you want to make the the motion of the central axis be what guides your shot and then you want to calibrate to know how quickly the camera is going to catch up to you you see what's happening here i'm moving the center and then the camera on its own is moving to catch up to the center and this is how you direct the shot with a gimbal Another thing you want to know about gimbals is that you gotta be about two to five times slower than you thought you were gonna be. <laughs> you want to be very slow and that has to do with all types of shooting. You want to slow down way down. So um, something like Tai Chi will really help you achieve those smooth motions. The next thing to know is that when you're using a gimbal you're moving in and out of subjects a lot so you may have to focus a lot unless your camera supports a very very good out of focus continuous so for example if i'm shooting here i have a subject close by like this little um pagoda thing or whatever it is and if i continue my pan now my subject is way out there and it's a lake so that's a big change of the depth of field that i need to have covered and any almost basically every f-stop is going to make you miss at that point unless your camera refocuses so you're going to have to either turn on continuous focus or refocus manually, which you cannot do mid-shot. 
So at that point, you want the new mirrorless cameras with an amazing autofocus continuous setting. 